All right, everybody, there's a lot to do. Everyone's gonna file out. This is basically, I wanna thank everybody for sticking around for the whole thing. I'm gonna do a quick thing and I'm gonna show you the funniest thing. If you thought that our dear friend Josh Hawley scramming out of the um, out of the, the, the Capitol complex was hilarious, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because I'm gonna show you a video and guys, we're gonna do this on Play Out B in a second. Um, there is a reaction of jo to Josh Hawley running for his life from the Capitol building um, that they showed in the press room, I think in the White House or in the Capitol press area, wherever it was. And it is hilarious. If you thought you laughed loudly, you have no idea until you see what happened um, when listening to the people who like actually were in there um, watching it happen. <laughs> when they played the video of Josh Hawley running out of the room, dudes. Everybody lost their minds. Hilarious, hilarious. So I do wanna give some shout outs to everybody. I hope that was worth it. But that is thanks to Edwin, who you know is the, the disembodied laugh of TYT. But he sent that to the pitch channel and I just needed to share it with everybody. That was when they showed Josh Hawley. Previous to today, you had seen Josh Hawley and his fist raising photo that he raised in solidarity with the protesters in his mind as he left the Capitol building. But today we saw something that was kind of a theme of the hearing, which is what are these people that are the top Trump toadies doing in reality behind the scenes when there's not in their to their consciousness a camera pointed in their face. And the truth is that they are freaking the hell out as the events were unfolding outside the Capitol building and eventually inside the Capitol building, you see the fuse run out on these people where they're there. They don't wanna be left holding the bomb as the fuse burns out and the explosion happens. So you saw a lot of them cast blame on Donald Trump. Um, it was so amazing. You saw people like Mick Mulvaney get quoted, Laura Ingram get quoted. Sean Hannity saying things like no more stolen election talk. Kevin McCarthy, there were excerpts of conversations from Kevin McCarthy talking about and to Donald Trump freaking out. Mark Meadows as well, Kevin McCarthy and and we heard the actual recounting from someone who was there of the conversation between Donald Trump and Kevin McCarthy where Kevin's like, you gotta get these people out because Kevin, despite what he would end up doing later when he went down to Mar-a-Lago to hang out with his boy, he was freaked out. And that we we, we actually heard the, the tale from the person who heard that happen. Um, Chip Roy, we saw his tale told afterwards where he basically gave up and said, I'm with everybody who's against Trump. Um, and the best was Donald Trump Jr.'s text messages to his dad uh, about his dad just dropping curses and in a time when even Donald Trump there was someone in the chat who said something that like when Donald Trump this is court for jester in the Twitch chat said when Don Jr is the one making the most sense in a group text you know you're in trouble and that's exactly what happened Donald Trump Jr was the one making the most sense granted he is who we thought he was for all the people that are kind of to the left or even like the basic libs and the people like Adam Kinzinger who know for a fact that Donald Trump and his little simps are just playing to the cameras. How bad could it get? I mean, we're not gonna lose democracy or anything, but we saw person after person who gave up the game. All those things where it's like maybe people didn't hear it. Maybe it wasn't said very clearly to them. Now everything's been said clearly. It has been said in no uncertain terms that Donald Trump did not 
want to give up on this dream of overthrowing the American government and the American system of government, the constitution which he swore to uphold, protect and defend. And all of his toadies were basically there saying one by one as the, the, the clock ran out, this is too much for me. We heard from people who resigned on January 6th. These were people who had two weeks left with a Trump, uh, a Trump administration job. And they were like, you know what? It's too much for me. Um, and the last point I'll make about Donald Trump Jr.'s text messages is he couldn't even not be a douchebag when defending the sanctity of the American political system. He made a Godfather reference. They're gonna go to the mattresses on this. Probably not because he watched The Godfather, he's probably watching The Sopranos and he's absolutely a little Carmine. He's like the son of the mob boss who's a total douchebag who like just wants to give it up and go to Hollywood. Um, so that's that. And I, I wanna thank some people who are giving super chats throughout the show. We thank the thousands and thousands of you who stayed with us throughout our coverage. It's not possible without you. I wanna thank Penny Dashie, uh, he who shall not be named should be made to testify. Luis, Luis Belmont uh, said, uh, pre presidential privilege, my rear end, Trump wanted Pence killed and overthrow our democracy. If Pokemon were actually real, several Blaziken and Charizard uh, would be blocking him from leaving the office. <laughs> Matthew Valente, random thing, a couple times said bad news, the beloved monarch butterfly has been listed as in danger due to climate change. That is very sad. Um, Gordon Little said, this is playing out like Aaron Sorkin wrote it. Well, they did have a producer help them. Um, and also said, if Trump doesn't end up in an orange jumpsuit and a pair of steel bracelets, America is very, very broken. That might well be the case. Uh, there was thanks to L for two months of membership under TYT Essential, several days, says L. I just really uh, understand the hostage situation and potentially murderous mob they were met with. And then thanks Jose Pinzon for uh, joining as a TYT channel member under TYT Essential. So thank you all so much for that. Um, I wrote down a sentence that'll be kind of like my pulling it all together moment. This is what they're trying to prove. Trump sent an armed mob to kill or coerce the vice president and Congress to overturn the election based on what he knew was a lie and that was always the plan. And that is as we end as some people in the chat called it season one of the hearings because they're gonna take a break all of August and see you back in September. And they're gonna come back strong for season two as we approach the midterms, right? They set out every bit of this. He, the armed mob part, he knew it was an armed mob. We heard testimony that they, that everybody knew that there were people in the trees with guns. We heard more of that today. And Trump sent them to the Capitol building. He said, go down there, okay? And he said, I'll go with you, but he sent them down. To kill or coerce the vice president and Congress to overturn the election. We saw that time and time again. And today, not so coincidentally, they talked about the 187 minutes that he spent not stopping them from doing this armed insurrection. Coincidentally, I say because 187 is the code for murder and Trump did. Essentially, as was acknowledged by multiple people, including Mitch McConnell, execute a 187 on a cop. There's a dead, they're dead police officers because of that. And a 187 on Ashley Babbitt. That is Trump's responsibility. Those words are not mine, those are Mitch McConnell's, as we heard today. And an attempted 187 on his vice president and in doing so on democracy and the American political system. And everyone tried to stop him. And to his credit, it would have been pretty cool. Like if I think of things that are on people's bucket lists, like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that before I died. Ending America, I'm sure if you're Donald Trump, sounds and feels really dope. And that's really all I can do to explain where he was at with it. Okay, so those things all played out. Those were all, all done. But with any crime, you need a knowingly, that he knowingly executed it. 
It was based on what he knew was a lie. And we have quote after quote, including this quote from Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue, who said he Trump responded very quickly and it said essentially, that's not what I'm asking you to do when they refuse to tell Donald Trump a lie that there was some kind of fraud. He's like, there's no evidence of fraud. And Trump said, what I'm asking you to do, what I'm asking you to do is just say it was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Now that is corroborated firsthand. That's not hearsay. That is a witness recounting what was told to him by the person trying to execute this crime, Donald Trump. And it was corroborated by stuff we heard today that they teased, that they teased last time where Steve Bannon said exactly the same thing. Donald Trump is just going to say he won and that's it. And finally, this is something you need to go look for on your own. And I apologize that it appears on a episode of Bill Maher's Real Time. Billy Bush said something that's very telling of Donald Trump. That is exactly his MO as proven by testimony after testimony. He just says when the cameras go off, Billy Bush was told by Donald Trump once, just say it and they'll believe it. And that's it. And that was always the plan. This was always the plan. It was always Trump's plan to do exactly that. We heard from Cassidy Hutchinson that there was a, he inquired, can we go down to the Capitol? Can I give a speech inside the Capitol? Can I give a speech outside the Capitol? When they went back, he pled with them. I need to go not to the White House, but down to the Capitol to execute what I hate to break it to everyone that's still a Trump supporter is only describable as a coup against the American political system, the American system of government. And sad to say that people that are our quote heroes now are like Adam Kinzinger and Mike Pence and Bill Barr. And the last, last, super last thing that I'll say, like Punk on it bike said, I don't wanna like Adam Kinzinger, but you do. It was exactly how it appears according to C Prince. But the last, last thing I'll say is that Liz Cheney got a dig in at people who said some stuff about her and everyone on that dais. And that was, they they said, this is a show trial and there's no ability to cross examine Bill Barr and anyone else who gave a testimony, people who are hardcore Republicans. She said, do you really think that Bill Barr would wilt under a cross examination from the likes of jacket off Jim Jordan. I don't think so, and he wouldn't.